it seems like all of a sudden Kyle Shanahan's stock is a little down. I mean, that was one person you could not criticize if you wanted to be, like, taken seriously in the media. Like, the only person who, like, really criticizes Kyle and sometimes even ridicules him with in a snarky way is me. Until now, JTO Sullivan, a 30-minute video on his YouTube channel, The Quarterback School, Film Room, I forget, Quarterback Film Room, he actually pretends to interview Kyle Shanahan, dresses up as Kyle Shanahan. He's sitting, I don't know, he has some very high-tech CGI, but he's sitting across from himself, interviewing himself, wearing Kyle Shanahan stuff, and he's really being snarky and kind of dismissive of Kyle Shanahan and what he does. Uh, it goes through all four of the quarterback injuries from this past season and just shows how there are design flaws in the Niners' offense on each one. Really interesting. And then at the end of the video, he gives his ultimate conclusion on what's missing from the 49ers' offense schematically. It's phenomenal. So I'm going to give a little Spark Notes version real quick because I just watched it and it's on my mind. So first, uh, Trey Lance's injury. He just shows it's a total, it's a really poorly executed play. First of all, Mike McGlinchey gets beat across his face by a defensive lineman who blows up the play. Everything from there gets messed up. Aaron Banks is pulling. He gets knocked off track. Tr uh, that slows down Trent Williams. And ultimately, Trey Lance gets injured by a player who was completely unblocked and was supposed to be blocked by Trent Williams. So the two offensive tackles on that play really didn't execute well. Mike McGlinchey at the beginning, Trent Williams at the end, and JT O'Sullivan's ultimate takeaway was if the Niners had just double teamed that D tackle who beat McGlinchey off the front, uh, off the rip with Spencer Burford and McGlinchey, Burford had no one across from him, the initial uh, chaos wouldn't have happened, the initial penetration. I think it's a really good analysis. Good job, JT, on that one. Then on Jimmy Garoppolo's, he points out that it's a third down and you got five guys in the pattern. It's an all, it's a zero blitz, no one in the middle of the field. There's no one attacking that. And you got two guys in the backfield, Debo and McCaffrey. They're both running choice routes. McCaffrey is a seasoned, experienced running back. He sees the blitz. He runs a quick hot route, a quick flat route to the outside. Debo doesn't. And he's saying either like Debo doesn't know what he's doing or Debo wasn't coached properly or why are you asking a wide receiver to make that running back adjustment on third down anyway? So Debo's mistake, if, if you remember, Jimmy's looking to his left. He gets hit by a guy unblocked off his left. It's supposed to be a hot route there. There isn't one. It's supposed to be Debo. That's what you get, I guess, playing wide receivers at running back. I mean, it's, it, it's cool playing Debo at running back when you hand him the ball, but he's not a running back. So he doesn't really know how to... I don't know. I guess he's not coached to do that stuff, not coached that well as a wide receiver, as a running back, excuse me. So that's that. Then the Brock Purdy one, uh, he, he again shows Debo. Debo's supposed to kind of make Hassan Reddick slow down. He's running a ghost motion, an end around without getting the ball, and he jogs it the whole way through. He basically does nothing on the play. He has no impact. You know, and what and what JT O'Sullivan says, hey, if you're gonna have the guy jog through the ghost motion, why don't you have him come around and block Hassan Reddick as opposed to doing nothing? Which I think is another really astute observation. And then finally, on the Josh Johnson injury, if you he, go, he looks back and he's like, look, I mean, all credit that you got Kittle and Usechek uh, chipping on the outside, but this is a seven step drop from under center, like it's 2004. That was the best line of the whole video I laughed at that one and I really do feel like Kyle Shanahan's offense is stuck in 2004 at least the past well yeah the whole offense is stuck in 2004 so JT O'Sullivan's final analysis is like look you're so committed to the run game in the play action game you have every concept imaginable in the run game every concept imaginable in the play action game but when it comes to the drop back passing game it's extremely limited it's not that good it's sparse it's not the Emphasis of the offense. And I don't, I don't think Kyle would even disagree with that. The Niners' attitude is they don't need to focus on the drop back passing game because they don't do it very much because they're always winning. They run the ball. They do play action. They don't even practice two-minute drills. Remember Kurt Bankert said that? He was on the team for a little while, and then he was doing a Twitch stream. They don't practice two-minute drills. Drop back passing is not an emphasis, and they think they can win a Super Bowl that way. The thing is you can win an NFC West division title running the ball and, and play, doing play action, playing good defense and leading leading games most of the time. But we see it eventually in the fourth quarter of the NFC Championship game or the Super Bowl, then you got to pass. And the Niners just aren't built from the, the offensive line to the protection schemes to the to the uh, route concepts, the, the patterns to uh, the play caller. 
This is not built to drop back pass, and that's why they always flop when it's time to do it. You can't win a Super Bowl in 2023 working around the drop back passing game. It's a passing league. It's not a running league. Running, I mean, running's important. It matters, but it's the least important thing. You got to be balanced. They got to respect it. You want them to be on their heels, but it's not the engine of your offense anymore. <clears throat> but Kyle is stuck in 2004. So very illuminating. All of a sudden, people are starting to say well, what I've been saying for a long time about Kyle Shanahan. And I think the fact that he's in year seven and has no actual plan or answer at quarterback is sort of opening up these criticisms. 